Hello, everyone. Are you all able to hear me? Uh, please, can you confirm on whether you are able to hear me or not? I am going to ask you all a question on whether you are able to hear me. It will be a poll question, which is coming your way. Let me ask, are you all able to hear me? Yes or a no? Review and publish. Can you all please respond uh, to this poll question? Wonderful. So a lot of you all are able to hear me. That's a wonderful news. And um, we shall get started now. Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to the FDP program, which is Faculty Development Program on Artificial Intelligence and Deep Learning. And this program is provided to you in collaboration with TASK. Telangana Academy for Skill and Knowledge. I will introduce our company and I will introduce myself in a bit. But today we are joined by Mr. Srikant Sinha, who happens to be the CEO of Telangana Academy for Skills and Knowledge. Uh, Mr. Srikant, uh, do we have? Do we have you? Uh, yes, hi, Bernie. This is Srikant. Yeah, hi, uh, Mr. Srikant. I would quickly like to introduce you, and then um, I'm, I will request you to, you know, share your thoughts on this. So, Mr. Srikant Sinha, prior to joining Task, has worked as CEO of NASCOM Foundation, which is a social development arm of the Indian IT BPM industry body NASCOM. He was there for over four years. He has a very rich experience spanning over 32 plus years. And he has actually helped NASCOM Foundation move to newer heights. And he has created a huge impact in the lives of a lot of working professionals. And here he is here now with task to ensure that the skill levels and knowledge levels of the faculty who in turn go on to teach the students is enhanced. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us this opportunity. And over to you, uh, if you may throw some light and share your thoughts on this, then uh, we would get started. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bernie. And uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all the faculty members from across the colleges in Telangana who have enrolled for this program. It's indeed a pleasure for me to be present amongst all of you today. Uh, as we launch this FDP program on artificial intelligence and deep learning, uh, I'd also like to thank 360 DG, uh, TMG, uh, Ajit, Bernie, Sharat, and Shirish uh, for taking out time and actually uh, arranging for this program. Uh, really appreciate it, uh, uh, guys. And, and uh, I think we already know that this year has been announced as the year of AI by the Honorable um, IT Minister uh, Sri uh, KTR Ramarao Garu uh, in the beginning of the year itself, where it said 2020 will be the year of AI. And we had started gearing up for it even before that also we had started with an FDP on AI. And um, I think probably what we are able to do through this, and, and as they say, you know, uh, and Winston Churchill said, you should not let a crisis uh, go without converting it into an opportunity. So uh, we at TASK have been converting each and every opportunity that we are able to get to uh, further enhance the skills of all our faculty members and our students um, through various virtual programs. And I would like to compliment the faculty who have gone online in such a short while, uh, you know, almost immediately as soon as the need arose. And uh, I would like to also, uh, you know, mention that, yes, it's important these days and probably as we see the COVID situation, uh, 
physical distancing i i i probably would like to use that word instead of the standard word which is used everywhere socially we need to be get more connected but physically we have to be distanced and that's where uh, the need of the r is in a contact free contactless economy if you look at it a lot of things have already started changing a lot of things will change uh, you know and and if you look at it digital commerce is very first thing which will uh, uh, which which will happen uh, and when we say digital commerce there are multiple things under it, it second thing which will move on is towards telemedicine and medtech will get a great boost and the third which is the most important out of the entire thing is automation is here to stay it's an irreversible change uh, having said that i would like to further mention over here that ir 4.0 was actually on the end well things were about to happen but only thing is probably this pandemic has really brought it much faster accelerated the whole pace itself a uh, couple of things which the industry today is witnessing as far as the top five trends uh, you know which are there as well as consumerism is 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 there is there is a shift from uh, uh, you know purchasing anything online to value and essentials so today a lot of people are looking at value and essentials uh, the second thing that has happened is there has been much more focus on uh, purchasing thing digitally and on an omni channel which also brings in uh, the next trend which is shock to loyalty so a lot of people are changing their brand loyalties as they go online if it is not available with one brand they move on to the other one the next thing is health and caring has become most important so you are looking at methods and methodologies where Uh, lesser and lesser exposure is there to people going out and the last but not the least is home body economy which is you want everything to be delivered at home you most of the people are in in software companies etc are working from home and this all is only possible in case if we look at how the organizations have actually molded themselves how they have started working and artificial intelligence is playing a huge part in it i think the shift that has happened is is uh, you know we need to understand as to how uh, you know things were happening before the pandemic and how they are happening now where uh, if you look at even the manufacturing organizations etc earlier if 10 people were supposed to do the job working every day uh, now due to the norms only 50% are coming on the shop floor and for the production not to go down the only way you can meet the the targets is in case if you use automation into it and and that's where the whole thing is is changing so uh, you know understanding the business challenges and translating it into mathematical ones is is uh where the biggest case for ai is coming in in a lot of of industries understanding data uh is also becoming more and more important and relevant not only understanding but preparing it and uh, cleaning it and and using different predictive models to to uh, you know uh, be it using r or python or or any of these uh so that you are able to develop new tailored approaches for solving those business problems uh, testing and fine tuning of those models also becomes very very important and of course once this entire thing is done deploying of it but the biggest challenge today is that the world over there's a huge demand and today if you look at it uh, of people so so a lot of ai ml is required by a lot of people in fact if you look at half of the work that was happening during uh, you know uh, the drug discovery or the vaccine discovery a lot of of uh, data as well as uh, ai has been used in this entire process itself so 
uh, just to uh, you know mention over here, the reason why I'm talking about all these things is that the demand for AI ML will only grow over the years. If you look at how the hiring strategy is being worked out right now, a lot of organizations and we have been doing these webinars uh, you know career counseling webinars career talk series expectations of the industry post covid and most of the industries that we have spoken to are now talking about virtual interviewing techniques and using software for doing the screening part of it which also is being done through ai as well as as uh, machine learning and deep learning uh, kind of algorithms so the demand for this kind of work is only going to grow uh, multifolds while people might talk about people being laid off etc i think uh, it's important for us to skill ourselves in areas which are here to stay and definitely uh, you know having worked uh, or or, or uh, you know ages ago in fact artificial intelligence and deep learning etc are not new words right from 1960s onwards they have been into uh, uh, you know they have been spoken about and and uh, when i used to be uh, you know talking about or teaching uh, artificial intelligence it was just fuzzy logic had just come in so and the machines were not as uh, 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 you know uh, their capabilities and capab capacities were not as what they are right now and and you could only do uh, you know Fuzzy logic was the new thing that had come at that time. You had story-based logic and so on and so forth. But it has moved on such a lot that when I, uh, you know, two years ago during the uh, global IT summit over here in Hyderabad, uh, when Sophie had come and I got an opportunity to speak to it, uh, Sophie's uh, creator, I only asked one thing that, if Alan Turing was alive today and he would ask Sophie as to, you know, how things have changed and what is AI today, all he said was endless possibilities. And that's really becoming the fact today, the truth today. And to all the faculty members, I would like to compliment you that you have taken the first step towards uh, understanding AI and ML uh, today by becoming a participant in this program and I do hope and urge and implore you that please post this training, do conduct similar trainings for your students because the industry requires the trained people, the resources who are well versed with artificial intelligence, deep learning, RPA, uh, etc. And uh, we at TASK are committed to ensure that we bring more and more such programs to you through whichever medium and, and would like to compliment and thank uh, 360 uh, Digi once again for uh, you know, coming forward to arrange this program. Uh, thank you, uh, Bernie, for this opportunity. And I would like to thank all the uh, 360 Digi team as well as the TASK team uh, for arranging this and providing me with an opportunity to express my views on, on this occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Srikant, for your presence and for the thought-provoking words. Thank you so much. We will certainly live up to the expectations. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Thank you all so much, faculty, faculty members, for joining in. The fact that you all have enrolled and joined the session is in itself a proof that you all are very interested in learning artificial intelligence and deep learning. Before we get started, and before I introduce myself and explain about the kind of artificial intelligence applications which we have built, I want to tell you that a couple of quick things which I want to, you know, explain here is that I am using a very fast internet because these questions keep coming in that you are not able to hear me, you are not able to see the screen. Just to clear the air, 
I want to prove that I am using a very high-end internet 100 Mbps and you will see the entire 100 Mbps uh, When it comes to download speed and upload speed if you are not able to hear me Chances are high that there is a problem at your end. I request you all to please check the audio settings if you are not able to hear me and check your internet settings another thing is we are also YouTube live and you will find a sticky note a yellow color sticky note on that we have placed our YouTube channel link you just need to click on that and you would be able to watch the session live on YouTube okay so I would rather also paste this link in the chat window okay and towards the end we will give you a link wherein you need to register there are a couple of things which will happen here you all will be given access to our whatsapp groups right so we'll be posting a link you will have to click on that and then you can join the whatsapp and uh, we also have the list of uh, the registered faculty members we would also proactively adding you to the whatsapp group just in case you guys miss out that's how uh, we are going to ensure that you all are added to a whatsapp group and the further conversations will happen in that okay and um, another thing is attendance towards the end we will also post a link wherein you need to provide your attendance to be able to get the certificate you will have to provide your attendance okay and uh, yeah please make best use of the youtube link also simultaneously even before we get started let me quickly introduce myself my name is barani kumar and uh, let me show you my profile i am pretty active on social media linkedin uh, i'm not that active on facebook but i have a decent account over there i happen to be industrial revolution 4.0 implementer chief data scientist and a technology advisor on four different firms i am an alumnus of indian school of business and iit hyderabad i have 15 years of experience I started off working with HSBC, then ITC Infotech, Infosys, and the last company with which I worked as an employee was with Deloitte. What do I do now? Recently, we have launched a book, right? And uh, yeah, that is on data science and AI. I'll, I'll go to that and show you. I am a director of InnoDataTix innovation data analytics i would also quickly speak about the kind of work that we do in the space of data science and ai i happen to be an advisory committee member of sixpus which is a malaysian company i do consulting for them in the space of ai and big data I happen to be a chief data scientist on a company called as Brontobite Analytics, which happens to be a startup in the space of life sciences healthcare. I am a chief data scientist on Athena Technologies as well. These three roles are consulting roles, and I am a director, full time director of InnoDataTix, and I happen to be a full time director of 360 Digit MG. And four other companies are HSBC, ITC, Infosys, and Deloitte. And these are my educational qualifications. And I have a bunch of international certifications ranging from Agile PM, Project Management, DSDM, Atern, to Lean Six Sigma, Green, Black, Master Black Belt, Risk Management, Project Management, ACP from PMI. I'm a certified Scrum developer, product owner, professional Scrum master, and Tableau certified professional. And here is my profile. Just in case you feel that it makes sense to connect with me, I'm well connected to 1600 plus CEOs of various companies. And um, there are 1200 plus HR heads 
who are connected uh, with me on my profile so just in case you feel um you want to connect with me there we go and uh, someone is asking for the youtube link as well there we go and let me also briefly speak about the bunch of things that we have done okay so we have launched a book which is become a practical data scientist 100 day challenge we keep doing projects for the likes of coca cola korean airlines yatra tata trust hindustan unilever these are all a few of our clients okay and we keep doing projects for them we also have international accreditations from the best of the universities across the globe including university technology malaysia which is globally ranked in 187th position not to undermine the iits because i am an iitian not to undermine the iits from india um, i'm not sure why but none of the iits are in top 200 okay and you UTM is there in 187th position. So getting that accreditation is a very good thing for us as a company, for us as a country as well, right? And um, of course, we also keep posting quick snippets, two minutes, three minutes max videos so that within 20 minutes, you get a gist of all the, you know, data science project ma management methodology aspects and we have also built an ai driven attendance tracking system which also has a thermal sensor which will track the attendance uh, which will track the body temperature so let me tell you if you use biometric system chances are high that you might spread virus and flu right so we have come up with video analytics using artificial intelligence which would scan your face and automatically track your attendance if you are a visitor or a security personnel or a staff it would track we also have thermal sensor which would scan your body and capture the body temperature if you have greater than 100 degree fahrenheit then it's not going to allow you and all this information automatically gets captured in the tracker automatically the details are sent to you know your hr manager reporting manager etc and it will also track the behavior of the person on whether you're sad or happy or very happy delighted the mood of your staff can be captured and not can be captured you know it is captured as part of this product that we have we have deployed this product in coca-cola and uh, we are working with them on industrial revolution 4.0 artificial intelligence and deep learning is a key component of industrial revolution 4.0 we have also partnered with panasonic and uh, do you know what we are the only edtech partner in the country whom panasonic india innovation center has shortlisted okay and that I'll, I'll explain briefly about the kind of use cases that we brought from panasonic into our training curriculum we also have accreditation from ibm panasonic utm city and gills is uk's number one accreditation body and we have an accreditation with them also we have during covid 19 you know as soon as covid 19 started because four months back we have done this we have built a model to predict covid 19 cases using ai and we have achieved an accuracy of 98 percent and we have delivered this in collaboration with apollo hospitals it was very well taken people from south korea they were just surprised by the kind of quality that we have brought into this product but then based on indian government's directive we did not do anything further on this because indian government directive was clear 
that no organization should do anything pertaining to COVID-19. So we just stop there. And um, we have uh, Shuba, one of our you know, AI trainers, instructors, and a consultant with uh, InnoDatatix. She has worked on this project. And uh, this is all about alongside a few of our past participants. So we keep giving our past participants internship opportunities. This was done for government, wherein the moment a vehicle goes through this bounding box, it will automatically track and automatically record on how many vehicles have passed through this. Not just how many vehicles, my dear friends, it will also capture which vehicles. And uh, if you just look at that, heavy moving vehicle multi-axle, two vehicles cross the signal. Heavy moving vehicle one, light moving vehicle 11, medium vehicle three. If this information is shared with roads and buildings ministry, then roads and buildings ministry would look at the flow of traffic and if the flow of traffic is more they would maybe widen the road or they can worst at least put a traffic signal so as to regulate the traffic we have also built you all are aware of paradise biryani who doesn't right we have built an ai driven chatbot for paradise biryani and uh, you just there will be a qr code you just need to scan that you can open the chatbot and do you know what you can place an order for your biryani sitting at your table and the food would be served at your desk right so these are uh, this is one of the amazing applications that we built one of our participants from Malaysia, because we have our office in Malaysia also, uh, she, along with a few other people, they have actually built this model wherein it will put a bounding box around your face, track your agenda, and track your emotions on whether you are sleepy or whether you are happy, okay, or whether you are, you know, angry, so on and so forth. And we also have our artificial intelligence driven, uh, you know, AI Spry, which is our learning management system. You all will be given learning management system access to the recorded, uh, sorry, not the recorded, uh, to all the training slides. Okay. You'll be given all the training slides that we, we use in the training and you'll be given access for three months so may, please make best use of that and on this we have a lot of functionalities which uh, a few of them or i would say those might not be available for you but you can make best use of the slides that we provide let me tell you this particular ai spry has also has recorded videos but for y'all, recorded videos would anyways be there on the YouTube channel. Okay. I mean, for the rest of your life, you can access. That's the reason why we provide it there. So here, if you have videos on our learning management system and say you're watching a video and you have a doubt on a specific concept, instead of going to Google and searching for a solution, you would be provided with an AI driven chatbot here. You can just ask questions to the chatbot and the chatbot is going to respond to you. On the answer, just like a tutor or a lecturer or a professor would do, right? When students ask a question, you all respond. You clarify the doubts. In that way, when student watching the video asks a question, our AI driven chatbot will respond. Not just that, we also have behavioral analytics, the video that I've just shown, right? With user consent, your webcam can be enabled and your webcam will capture your face, your facial expressions to determine on whether you're 
active or inactive and towards the end it will send you a personalized report saying that congratulations on watching two hours of video but then in these two hours from 14th minute to 20th minute you were kind of disengaged you were falling asleep or you were on call with someone else do you want to watch only this portion from 14th minute to 20th minute and the end user who is watching the video can actually click on this go to that portion of the video here if you have play and this you go to 14th minute and then watch only that portion of video where you were potentially disengaged sleeping or on call or whatever be the reason right and these are all part of ai sprites anyways you'll be given access to that you cannot use those functionalities those are paid functionalities but then the training slides would be made available to you you all will be given username and password the moment you enter the username and password it will appear like this now let me go here uh, data science study material in this way and you'll have the slides which will be available you just need to click on the slides and you can let me just zoom it a bit you can completely zoom that's okay but then yeah you can click on next and watch all the videos uh, all the slides yep and now there is one another thing that we have done we have built an artificial intelligence driven robot it is there in a hyderabad office uh, and if someone wants to visit do let me know i can arrange a few of our team members to be there this robot actually has ai driven capabilities it would automatically recognize you it has a camera at the forehead it will recognize you and it will greet you not just that it will also capture your emotions and it will say hey i see that you are extremely delighted today kind of and it will answer a lot of questions with a lot of wit in it witty responses yeah so that's our ai driven robot and now we also have hydraulic arms it will move forward come back all those capabilities are there this is what artificial intelligence is all about and a few other applications even before we continue further and those applications are uh, we have built ai driven projects in the space of automotive aviation life sciences healthcare analytics manufacturing financial services insurance energy resources retail social media telecom and technology you name it we have our presence very deep and uh, as part of life sciences healthcare analytics we built a project in predicting the triple triple negative breast cancer so let me show you that briefly i think i need to type sample and then see sample images i'll speak briefly about this product which we have done as part of uh, brontobite analytics which is a startup but then let me also touch upon these so what we have done here is we have used radiology images pathology images so i think it's better i draw and try to explain you all when you go to a doctor when a patient visits a doctor and after the complete conversation doctor will give a prescription to the patient which neither the hospital majority of the hospitals i mean they do not record the prescriptions and the patient you know to a very great extent they also do not maintain these records so this previous health history information is lost 
if you cannot measure something you cannot improve upon that so what we have done is in the product that we have built as part of brontobite analytics we have done horizontal projections and vertical projections and using that this data which is handwritten by a doctor is automatically stored in a database automatically it gets recorded in the database and then if doctor feels that patient has traces of cancer you know doctor will say a dear patient you have to go visit a radiologist radiologist is a doctor mbbs proper doctor who would have done specialization in radiology so this radiologist would actually look at your images radiology images mammography images if it's breast cancer and then radiologist would analyze those images and if radiologist feels that mm, there could be traces of cancer it's suspicious so this is how it will be uh, dense suspicious dense normal malignant benign calcification benign means no cancer malignant means cancer so if i were to open this come up it's still taking a while not sure why it's taking so much of time it, it should ideally open swiftly yeah yeah so here if you look at these traces you know for example these traces here like this these are called as micro calcification like calcium deposits basically those could be cancerous or non-cancerous your typical data science will not help it you need deep learning algorithms and deep learning is the future gone are the days where people used to learn linear regression logistic regression and all that people are now focusing on deep learning algorithms which can analyze any kind of data okay so radiologists would look at your image and if radiologist feels that do you know what uh i'm not 100 percent certain that you have cancer but i'm certain that there is something very suspicious then radiologist will ask you to go to pathologist what would the pathologist do pathologist would put a needle and prick the needle bit of tumor they will put that on a glass slide put a solution onto that and spread it either they take the image of this or put this under microscope and analyze on whether there are cancerous you know cells or not one image is worth 1.5 gb one image is 1.5 gb you cannot open it on your typical computers or softwares and let me show you how that appears so what we have done is we have broken down the image if if this is your complete image for instance pathology image we have broken it down into multiple slides multiple tiles or slides however you want to call it and each tile was then analyzed and the images that i'm going to show you is each tile see one more thing i keep telling uh, my dear faculty members that i believe in practical delivery not the theoretical stuff wherein i train theory and then it's all theory right we don't know the practical applications if i keep tra training you all on theory so this is your pathology image this is exactly how it appears and um, these are all examples of malignant means cancerous of course pathologist is a proper mbbs doctor 
who is specialized in pathology right and then what happens is these two reports of radiologist and pathologist you take it to oncologist oncologist is a doctor who is specialized in cancer this doctor would actually tell you on should you go for surgical removal of the tumor or should there be a, a chemotherapy session which be, which is to be provided to you right so oncologists will suggest that in this way there are a lot of examples another example is in the space of telecom and technology wherein what we have done is we have started flying this is for a client in malaysia okay we started flying drones on top of the telecom towers these drones would capture the videos and images of the tower and then you quickly do some kind of image processing to determine whether any of the component is faulty or not faulty a few components will have sensors using that you can determine but a few components will not have sensors so you just fly your drone you classify you you capture the images and based on that you decide on whether the component is faulty or not if you have say 100 telecom towers if you want technician to climb up check all the components and go down uh, frequently you want to do right at, at the period of one week or two weeks etc at a frequency of one week or two weeks so that would be a costly affair if you want someone to climb up and go down hence we have flown drones and we have done this i'll speak more about drone driven cultivation and the projects that we have done manufacturing energy and resources retail you name it in the space of manufacturing we are we are doing a project for coca cola wherein in coca cola aminpur plant in near miapur hadbad right you'll have machines they have a few industrial iot sensors but they don't have all so we also installed a few industrial iot sensors such as vibration sensor because if your machine vibrates vib vibrates in a specific manner it might break down you'll also have sound sensors if your machine is giving you a weird sound then it might break down vibration sensors sound sensors filler sensors blower sensors temperature sensors a lot of sensors were used all these industrial iot sensors would generate data and you collect the data and put it on a scada system that's like your industrial computer a computer attached to your machine think in that way industrial pc or industrial computer or you can store it on cloud like amazon web services etc once you get the data onto the cloud or wherever be it you take the data and you use python or r whatever you want to use and you build predictive model this predictive model will send alerts sms alerts to whom to technicians okay to technicians who are on ground these technicians will actually uh, go and fix the issue even before it goes wrong if really if some component might fail they are going to quickly fix that 
and the pro proactive alerts could be something like this that your component might fail in the next three hours so quickly your technician will rush and then fix the issue if that's a false alarm meaning technician might say hey, i went and checked your machine there is nothing wrong everything is hunky dory then they are going to give a feedback saying that it was a false alarm and then you as a data scientist or ai expert would update your model periodically so it's an ongoing process this is called as preventive maintenance okay a lot of people from mechanical background electrical background electronics background uh, they keep asking me this these questions on hey is ai valid for us are we eligible absolutely my dear friends i mean if at all there is anyone from mechanical background or electrical or electronic background you uh, will fit like a t when it comes to data science or ai it is industry agnostic it is applicable to all the industries no matter what okay so uh, make best use of this in these kind of projects we prefer those kind of students with mechanical background electrical or electronics background because their role is important of course people from it and computer science are anyways valid but these people are also valid they, they are valid in automotive energy and resources etc one more project which we have done way back in um, 2017 for a gold standard company in india let me show you this uh, that's my name author baranikuma that will be the first project on project management uh, institute website oh come on why is it not moving sorry yeah so here what is a project management methodology that we have applied and um, what are the various deliverables so on and so forth is also something that we have used and here we go so if there is a truck which is transporting the goods from one point to another say from point a to point b it could be something like hyderabad to delhi and if your vehicle breaks down midway then you will certainly call the nearest service center so and if your vehicle is under warranty it is a warranty cost to original equipment manufacturers so someone who has manufactured the truck and if your vehicle is under insurance you will claim insurance so it's a cost to the insurance firm also so what we have done is we have placed industrial iot sensors on the truck these industrial iot sensors are called as i a tcu or ecu telematics controlling unit or electronics controlling unit this will be placed on the truck and the truck on the move would generate data of critical components and transmit over telecom provider network and place it on cloud back then in 2017 machine learning on cloud was not very famous and what we have done is we have taken the data from cloud and we have done two things descriptive analytics and predictive analytics as part of predictive analytics we predicted on whether a vehicle is going to break down or not if it is going to break down then after how many kilometers will it break down and which component will it break down trust me if you read this you'll just be surprised 
on the kind of various things that we have combined together industrial iot sensors cloud computing artificial intelligence and what are the various departments what are the various uh, you know stake key stakeholders who were actually benefited uh, is umpteen in number you have to read this and you'll simply be surprised and there are a lot of such things which are available you know and you can make best use of that all right next key thing even before we get started i wish to show you something very interesting so here as part of this vehicle breakdown i was saying that you know what we have used industrial iot sensors cloud computing and artificial intelligence a combination of those which is the perfect combination even today right wherein you combine the strengths of iot cloud and ai industrial iot sensors plus the strength of cloud computing okay. and you also combine it with artificial intelligence and then you build amazing you know uh, solutions when you can combine the strength of all these things then i was saying that if you go to 360 digit mg let me go back and show you that here you will see something called as mind map if you click on this mind map you will have a lot of mind maps when you do a drop down the area of interest for us would be ai and deep learning when you click on ai and deep learning you get here click on that okay and here you will get a high level overview of entire artificial intelligence and deep learning the reason why we have named this as practical ai is because we have this project management methodology called crisp dm crisp dm stands for cross industry standard process for data mining as part of this there are six stages stage one is understanding the business problem stage two is collecting the data based on the business problem stage three is cleansing the data stage four is data mining or machine learning stage five is model evaluation and stage six is model deployment let me give you a basic example on how to understand the business problem and how to proceed further okay i keep giving this example of a bank because it is very easy to understand okay and then i will also give you example of agriculture let me give you an example of bank okay here say uh, you know loan department head walks up to you and says that my dear artificial intelligence experts i have a problem to be solved then you check on what that problem is and the loan department head would say that do you know what significant proportion of customers who take the loan are defaulting on the loan significant proportion of customers are defaulting on loan if significant proportion of customers are defaulting on the loan then how would you help this particular bank resolve this issue okay 
even before you proceed further, once you have the business problem, the first step is to understand the business objective on what you want to achieve. And also, you need to lay down the business constraint. Business objective and business constraint. Business objective here is since a significant proportion of customers are defaulting on the loan, you might want to minimize the number of defaulters. So you'll say, okay, let me minimize the loan defaulters. So what would you do? You will build an application say wherein you'll have the database with all the details of all the customers who have applied for the loan right all the customers who have applied for the loan until now and whenever there is a new customer who applies for the loan you capture the details such as age education gender all those details and using this data, say you will use Python or you will use R. And then you are going to build a predictive model. A predictive model. Which will then predict on whether a person will default on the loan or not default on the loan. whether a specific customer who applied for the loan, will that person default or not? If this customer says that, or, or if the model predicts that, for this customer, there is 90% probability that the customer might default on the loan. Then my question to you all is, would you approve the loan or would you reject the loan? what would you do let me put this as a poll question poll question coming your way on what would you do let me see poll question here uh, i'm going to put a new poll new poll will you approve or reject the loan let me see how many of you all will be rational at thinking and then responding. Do not worry, uh, we will not track this. So you might want to try out. We will not track on how many correct, wrong, who is answering, nothing. Okay, you're free to answer this. Yep. So for this question on, would you approve the loan or reject the loan? Can you let me know on what would you do? If the prediction says that there is 90% probability that a person might default on the loan, then what might you do? Would you approve the loan or would you reject the loan? That's the question here. Okay, you would either approve or reject the loan, yeah? So, let me look at the response. Okay, 56% of y'all are saying yes. 50, another percentage, certain percentage of people are saying no, we would not. If there is 90% chance that someone will default on the loan, that means they will take the loan and do not pay back. Then why do you even want to have such a person, right? Why do you want to even approve the loan for such a person? So most often than not, you would reject the loan. But if you, even before I get there, okay. How do you think banks become profitable? What do banks do? They lend loan. And if you lend loan, you in the sense bank, banks will get interest rate.
or interest amount rather not rate interest amount if they get interest amount based on that amount they make profits and if you are rejecting the loan then the banks who are not even given an option to lend the loan so obviously their profits will decline hence your client will also put a constraint on you saying that why you minimize the loan defaulters try to also maximize the profits now the moment there is business constraint the moment you have a business constraint laid down it will be an interesting problem to solve now it is interesting if it is only to minimize the defaulters by hook or crook you can do that the moment business constraint is levied on you it becomes a challenging problem to solve right so what we have done is this is a project that we have done and because of this uh, we featured in cio review uh, magazine and our company innodatatex was rated as one of the top 20 data analytics solution providers okay so what we have done there that's interesting bit right so let's understand that so what we have done is we have implemented something called as survival analytics what is survival analytics alongside predicting on whether a person will uh you know default on the loan or not we also predicted on how many after how many installments will a person default person will default with 90% probability but then after how many installments and say the prediction says that this person will default after 28 every month installments after 28 months of installment installments that means you can still approve the loan you can still approve the loan but then you have to reduce the loan tenure to 24 months approve the loan you know that after 28 months this person will default so you know for a fact that until maybe 24 months or so it's safe zone you can approve the loan reduce the loan tenure to 24 months reduce the loan amount to be disbursed increase the interest rate maybe if you want to but this way you are both minimizing the defaulters as well as maximizing the profits at the same time and this is the kind of solution that you need to provide to the customer and only then people will value you if you just minimize defaulters by saying okay there is 90% probability that someone will default so reject the loan you cannot go like that you need to abide by the business constraints always the next thing is data collection once you understand the business problem you actually record your objectives and constraints typically your objectives and constraints should be uh, for two to three words and you need to use data optimization terms to the extent possible that is you use minimize maximize etc and then you'll have a project charter project charter is the first document which gets created on any project it's it's going to officially say that hey here is a project and it's approved by the sponsor and you can proceed further once this is clear you proceed further with data collection as part of data collection you have data types we are going to discuss in detail about all these data types because once you understand the data types you will be good to proceed further okay and then we'll understand a little bit of data cleansing and we will get into the deep learning algorithms so first things first you need to understand the difference between continuous data and discrete data 
continuous data is that data which if represented in decimal format okay if if you represent the data in decimal format it makes sense for example weight of a person i can say that you know what i weigh 75 kgs you'll say all right if i say my weight is 75.1 kgs you'll say okay if my weight is 75.1231 kgs you'll say all right this guy is being very accurate it still makes sense though i am representing the data in decimal format it is still making sense so this is continuous data on another side you have discrete data discrete data is that data if you represent that in decimal format it does not make sense for example i can either say i have one house or i would say one car or i have two cars what if i say i have 1.789 cars you'll say oh my god this guy is a mad person how can you have 1.789 cars you either have one car or two cars or 10 cars right the moment you represent this in decimal format it will stop making sense and this is discrete data a few questions for you all coming your way on the uh, poll can you all please respond to it the poll question is here height of a person is it continuous or discrete yep please can you all respond to this please can you respond poll questions all we know is how many people responded we don't even know who has responded so don't worry about tracking your accuracies so you just go ahead uh huh 70% of you all approximately are saying that it's continuous data absolutely my dear friends it's continuous because height can be represented in decimal format if you're representing height in centimeters you can say 163.72 centimeters 168.01 centimeters it can be represented in decimal format also and it actually makes sense if you represent something in decimal format and if it makes sense that is called as continuous data let me ask you another question okay this time i'll be a little funny okay number of marriages you have done is this continuous or discrete yeah what do you think number of marriages can you represent that in decimal format and does it make sense no but i'm really happy that at least 85% of you all are uh, you know getting it right absolutely my dear friends either you marry once or twice or thrice can you marry 1.786 times you cannot the moment you say this your wife is going to beat you <laughs> right and number of times your wife beats is also discrete data <laughs> unfortunately yeah one time two times three times in that way okay uh, that jovial bit aside you know what uh, we have uh, count data we have categorical within discrete categorical let me quickly explain do you know what we have worked on a project wherein there was this semiconductor manufacturing plant 
which was manufacturing the circuits circuit of your mobile phone and circuits of uh, you know laptops so on and so forth so what we have done is we have placed a high end camera on this okay and the moment a circuit goes through it it will quickly capture the image and it is going to classify on whether this circuit is defective or not defective okay whether it is defective or not defective defective or not defective classifying in this way is called as binary it is binary categorical data and we also have multiple categorical data for example is this particular image you know the same example that i've given for example um if i go here and click on sample images it would come up yeah. we had to classify on whether an image was benign calcification dense malignant dense malignant calcification dense normal dense suspicious there are multiple categories it's not just classifying on whether your image is cancerous or not benign or malignant it is all about classifying all these 10 classes forget about contour masking but then barring that you have fatty benign calcification etc so having more than one class more than two classifications would classify to fall under multiple categorical data and i think this is good enough categorical count continuous uh, let's not get into interval ratio and nominal and ordinal okay that's part of our typical data science training and you have qualitative data versus quantitative data simply put your quantitative means numbers you know this i i often hear this example you know if employees are late to office especially in our office then when we check with them on hey why are you late today they say do you know what i stay very far off it takes a lot of time for me to reach office okay when you make a statement that you stay very far very far not far then this is qual qualitative data qualitative very far now how do i quantify it probably i'll go to the hr and ask the hr person on hey how far does mr uh, ravi stays from office then hr might check the records and say do you know what mr ravi stays one kilometer away from office Oh my god ravi you told you stay very far but you stay only one kilometer away ravi will say yeah that is what i meant one kilometer is very far for me so that is uh i mean very far means it's qualitative quantitative means you quantify it using numbers if you say that this training is good then on a scale of one to five if we can take a rating and if you say five that means you are very happy right so you're quantifying basically you're giving some number and continuous data and count data would fall under quantitative so these two are called as quantitative okay and your qualitative data is categorical data okay so that's the difference between qualitative and quantitative
Now I have a question for you all, poll question coming your way. Please, can you all respond to this? And my question here is, mm, number of vehicles which cross a traffic signal in the morning at 8 a.m. is 268. Did I type something incorrectly? Uh oh. Okay. Is this qualitative or is this quantitative? Yeah. Can you all go for this? Let me see how many of you all will get it right. Number of vehicles which cross a traffic signal in the morning at 8 a.m. is 268. Wonderful. Quantitative. Because we are quantifying it using number. We are saying 268 vehicles, right? Let me ask another question. And here the question is, um, number of people who pass the security check every day at 11 a.m. is around 398. Is this Qualitative or quantitative? Yep. Go for it, please. Is this quantitative or qualitative? Wonderful. It's quantitative, right? Because it's a number, 398. You know, I understand, you know, why uh, the number has actually sl uh, slightly less in quantitative and slightly more in qualitative because naturally after I ask one question in quantitative you assume that there'll be another question on qualitative right that might be the reason for this statistics <laughs> okay and uh, let me discuss let, let us discuss about yet another very very important thing which is structured versus unstructured data Structured data is that data which can be placed in a nice tabular format in rows and columns. If you can place your data in a nice rows and columns format in a tabular format, then this is called as structured data. On another side, you have unstructured data. When it comes to unstructured data, you'll have videos, images, audio files, and textual data. All these are unstructured in format because in the raw state, in the raw state, these data types cannot be placed in a tabular format. And do you know what? You can, however, convert your data, which is in unstructured format, and you can make it structured. You can transform your data to make it structured. And how do you do that? How do you transform the data to become structured? I'll let you know. Videos, basically, when you look at any video, I'm sure you all are aware that videos are nothing but collection of images which are taken at a rapid pace. So if you have all these images, which are taken at a rapid pace, then it forms video. And these images are called as frames. And this is called as frames per second. If you have more frames per second, uh, more will be the quality of the videos, right? High definition videos, etc. 
it's simple i mean we all would have done this right flip book what you you all we all rather not you all we all would have done this basically it's called as flip book you flip it in that way okay i can also play this video for you all uh come on that's a little disturbing okay so look at that you're flipping in that way right and it appears as if it's a movie that is exactly what uh frames of image mean right so when you say video analytics it is nothing but image analytics you are breaking down the video into multiple frames of images and each image is taken out so let me take one frame here and each of the image is again made up of multiple pixels okay you'll have multiple rows and columns you take each pixel value you take each pixel value and each pixel value would range between 0 to 255 0 means black and 255 means white okay black color means uh, 0 white means 255 and do you know what as part of this program we are going to extensively work on images extensively image processing and all that okay that aside you take each of these pixel values and place it in tabular format for example if this is your tabular format you take the first pixel value put it here you take the second second pixel value put it here you take the third pixel value take the fourth pixel value so on and so forth you put all the pixel values here okay so that's how you transform your unstructured data to structure when it comes to audio or speech we use something called as mel frequency sepstral coefficient this is one way of converting your unstructured data to structure and when it comes to text mining there are many ways bag of words term document matrix so on and so forth yeah that's very trivial thing dealing with videos and images is very very important and that is where we will be spending our time next we also have something called as big data versus non big data if you were to take a textbook example on big data and understand about big data then you all just have to say that okay do you know what three v's or four v's or five v's is what big data is is made up of what does that mean you know what i'll i'll go with four v's you know not three not four uh, not five if the data is coming at uh, if if data is of huge volume humongous data coming your way and if the data is coming to you at a rapid speed high velocity and if you have variety of data that means images videos iot sensors data log files so on and so forth and then if you have a lot of veracity in the data then it classifies to i mean you can categorize that data as big data this is very bookish and here we have told that it is practical ai and deep learning right so if i were to give you a practical example then this is what i would say that any data which you cannot store given your computer or server resources for example uh, the maximum hard disk space that you can have on your computers would be two terabyte now given the current condition 
current world. I mean, it might increase later on today, two terabytes. And if you look at Pratt and uh, Whitney, which is a company which uh, manufactures the aircraft engine, etc., in 12 hour flight, it produces 844 terabytes of data. If it produces 844 terabytes of data, then how can you store it on your computer? It has only eight terabytes and you're speaking about 844 terabytes of data and that too in a single flight journey. If you have multiple flights and then just imagine the volume of data, you cannot even handle that right so if you cannot store the data given your limitations given your uh, data center or given your computer limitations then that's big data from storage perspective you cannot store it kind of right you just ran into big data problem and another thing that we need to discuss is from processing perspective what do you mean by processing if I were to give you, uh, say, 200 MB Excel file, trust me, friends, if you haven't tried it, I request you to try it. 200 MB Excel file, just try to open that. And it will go on and on and on. That circle, you'll see that round circle, you know, as if it's trying to mesmerize you, the round circle. And, and do you know what? I We jokingly used to uh, talk about this, that if you're not in a mood to work as a data scientist or ai expert all you need to do is pick up the biggest excel sheet and just double click that and that's it you can go have your breakfast you can have your coffee you can have your lunch you can go out for movie come back in the evening to office still the circle will be going round and round and round <laughs> right just 200 MB Excel file I'm speaking about. So if your system cannot process something, then you just ran into big data problem. It need not be those four Vs that I've defined. It is very contextual. And any data which you can store easily and process easily, that's non-big data. So that's the difference between big data versus non-big data. and a few more things which are very important because do you know what we become too much of textbook oriented that we forget the big picture that whatever people are learning they need to implement it somewhere right so if you have data which is in structured format and big data you resort to hadoop hadoop is a framework it is not a database. Hadoop is not a database. Okay, Hadoop is not big data. Hadoop is a framework which is used to handle big data. Okay, and you have Spark which is used to process the big data. That aside, if you have structured data which is big, you make use of Hadoop framework. If you have unstructured data, which is big, still you use Hadoop environment. But then if you have structured data, which is non big, not big, you make use of something called as relational database management system, such as Oracle database. Or you have Microsoft SQL. You have MySQL. And you have a bunch of other things. And when you have unstructured data, which is non-big, then you store your data in NoSQL. Why do you need to know these things? Because without knowing this, what are you going to train your, I mean, train the people and how are they going to implement in the real world? 
so at least you need to give this big picture which is very important once the big picture is clear then whatever concepts you teach makes sense because they know that okay i'm learning this to actually implement in that way okay next we have cross sectional data time series data longitudinal data or panel data so cross sectional data i'll first explain that say you you have a data set like this okay wherein you have the details on um whether a patient is tested positive or not with respect to covid you have the age of a person okay gender of a person then uh, historical health information so on and so forth and you have details on whether someone is tested positive or negative in that way you have the data okay here in this data date and time and the sequence in which you arrange the data is unimportant okay the date and time and the sequence in which you arrange the data is unimportant if i mean for example the reason why i'm saying this is because whether you go to hospital on a monday morning at 8 am before rahu kalam okay or after rahu kalam whatever be it, it doesn't matter if you are covid positive it will come out to be covid positive if you are covid negative it will come out to be covid negative do you know what if you go on a tuesday after 12 pm you'll be tested negative otherwise you'll be tested positive there is nothing like that so the date and time is immaterial unimportant okay and then the sequence in which you arrange the data the sequence is the sequence doesn't matter patient 1 patient 2 patient 3 doesn't matter it can be in any sequence if you are dealing with such a data where date and time and sequence are an important it is called as cross sectional data and usually when it comes to cross sectional data you will have more than one variable usually okay now time series data when it comes to time series data say you want to uh understand on how many covid-19 cases would come tomorrow how many covid-19 positive cases would come tomorrow okay and you have all the covid-19 cases here number of covid-19 cases we have i think roughly 22 million now but then uh, say 22nd jan 23rd jan 24th jan so on and so forth for all the days you have the data number of covid-19 cases and you want to now forecast the number of covid-19 cases for tomorrow if you want to forecast the number of covid-19 cases tomorrow just as an example then you need to have the data arranged in that sequence 22nd jan 23rd jan 24th jan 25th jan you need the data in that sequence so here in this scenario date and time and the sequence in which you arrange the data is important if date and time and the sequence is important then it is called as time series data 
And there is also another data set called as longitudinal or panel data. And here, usually what happens is you'll have a single variable. Right? You'll usually have a single variable. And then you have longitudinal data or panel data. In longitudinal or panel data, you are going to plot number of COVID-19 cases in India, in USA, in Italy, in Brazil, so on and so forth. The point here uh, which you need to note is that you will have features of both cross-sectional and time series data in this longitudinal data. You have more than one variable. So it has a component of cross-sectional data. And the number of COVID-19 cases, you arrange them in a sequence. So you'll have 22nd Jan, 23rd Jan, so on and so forth. When you have the data arranged based on the time sequence, then you're bringing in the time series aspects. On one side, you're bringing in multiple variables that's cross-sectional. On another side, you're arranging the data based on date and time, so it's time series. When you have combination of these two, then it is called as longitudinal data or panel data. Trust me, friends, when I say practical, it is practical. Once you understand the data types and the data collection techniques, only then you would appreciate the algorithms that we're going to learn. We will learn about artificial neural network, right? We are going to learn about convolution neural network, recurrent neural network, how to deal with videos, images. Practically, we will do it using Python. But what are to be installed, what softwares you need, I am going to speak about those at a later point. Right? Maybe tomorrow also we would be discussing about uh, theory. And from day after onwards, we will get into practicals once we set a foundation very strong. So here, we also need to discuss about another thing, which is balanced versus imbalanced data sets. And imbalanced data sets are also called as rare events. Imbalanced data sets are also called as rare events. So let's understand about balanced versus imbalanced data sets. For this, one thing that I need to explain is about the most important equation, which is y is equal to f of x. Y is output that you want to achieve. And the output that you want to achieve might depend on a single input or the output that you want to achieve might depend on multiple inputs. For example, if you want to predict on what is the weight that I'm going to gain, then it depends on what? Number of calories that you consume. Okay, number of calories that you consume. That is going to determine the weight gain. Okay, next. Sometimes there might be multiple inputs also. For example, you might ask me this that, hey, what will be the salary after this training? What does it depend on? It depends on multiple things such as, are you attending all the classes? So it will depend on attendance for sure. Are you watching the video once again? Because at one go, people might not understand. They might want to watch. So I would say number of times you watch the video, number of times video is watched, Plus, it depends on your educational qualification, number of certificates that you attained. And trust me, you will have to work on live projects. 
at least one live project and people who attend all the sessions we will give you an opportunity to work on the live projects okay and that will give you the practical experience that is needed and once you have the practical experience you can rule the world when you train your students absolutely right okay so here an output might depend on a single input or an output might depend on multiple inputs also that aside now balance versus imbalance data set uh, let me take an example of all right covid 19 no no let me take covid i already explained so let me take the loan defaulters example loan defaulters age of a person gender of a person income education all those are given age income educational qualification so on and so forth all these are called as your inputs and you have an output here which is loan defaulters whether a person will default or not default not default you have the data say you have data of 10000 customers to check whether your data are balanced or imbalanced, you just need to look at your output variable. Suppose you have 50% default. 50% of these say default, that means 5,000. And another 50% says not default. Then this is called as balanced data set. Okay, it's called as balanced data set. If you have, say, 40% default and 60% not default, still it is called as balanced. 30% and 70%, still it is called as balanced. If one of these classes, one of these classes means default or not default, one of these classes, is less than 30 percent which is 29 percent 71 percent one of these it could be not default or default then it enters into a zone wherein you can say that this is an imbalanced data set this is a thumb rule take it with a pinch of salt a lot of data scientists and AI experts based on their experience have given this thumb rule saying that if one of the classes is less than 30%, then that means it is imbalanced. This is just a thumb rule, take it with a pinch of salt. Okay, and um, we have one more thing, which is batch processing versus real-time processing. But I think uh, we might not have the time to complete this. So what I shall now do is, I will quickly explain about a few things uh, which are needed for you to understand. Number one, we will give you access to the videos, all the, all the 10 days of videos, will be posted on our private YouTube channel. Okay. And if you want access to this, all, all you need to do is, uh, you go here and, uh oh, what happened? Sorry. Would it be there? Yeah. No, it's the link to attendance. So let me see once on where we have this YouTube channel. Okay, fine. It, it, it would come up any which ways here. Yeah, here it is. Here is a link. You please, please access this link without failure. I put the link in the chat window. All right, so I would also click here. And um, okay, I'm not sure why that view is not appearing for me to post in the chat, but our, our team will do that. 
people who are logged in through YouTube channel, uh, you anyways have access to this. Please, 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 without failure, click on two things, subscribe and this notification. All the videos, the moment they get uploaded, you will be given, given access to that. You will automatically be notified. Please do that. These are private YouTube channels. Uh, okay, not the public ones. I mean, everyone will not have access to this. That is what I meant. So that's number one. Number two is we have posted the attendance link. Okay, on our uh, you know screen. I'm also going to show you that here on the sticky note you'll find that and I'm going to post it here. There we go. Sure. We shall also that's a very good advice. We shall also do that but uh, okay it, once this okay in order to get a certificate because AI and deep learning is the most in demand out of all the data courses it's more in demand than data science right so you'll be given a certificate if you get this certificate you'll get only when you attend if you get this you will be entitled to work on live projects okay one live project per person we will give you an opportunity so please ensure that you you get you attend all the classes. Third thing is uh, we will be sharing, uh, we'll be adding you all to the WhatsApp. We will do it from our side, okay? We thought we will share a link, but then we will do it from our side. We are going to add you all to the WhatsApp group because we have your details. And just wait until tomorrow. If you are still not added to the WhatsApp group by tomorrow, we will guide you on how to add yourself fourth very important we are going to pose the quizzes on linkedin where i'm assuming you all are active because social media analytics is a very big thing so i request you all to be very very active on social media on linkedin and face group we are going to post the quizzes you can respond to those quizzes and tomorrow I mean, this is not mandatory, but it is good because you, you might want to ask your students also these kind of questions, right, in the classroom uh, to engage them. So that will serve that purpose also. Okay, very important. Please uh, take the quizzes also. And um, how to get to know what are the quizzes, where are those, right? So just go to 360digitmg.com. When you go to 360digitmg.com, you just scroll down and you'll find two links. One is the LinkedIn link for our page. On this page, you will see the quiz. Okay, you'll, you'll observe the quiz being posted here. So please make, make best use of that. And if you are not having an account, I sincerely request you all to create because in big universities and colleges, they are looking at these things also. On Because in data science or AI, social media and web analytics is a very big subject. And if you were to teach that subject, you first of all need to have an account. Okay. And please, please, uh, th there'll be an option to follow us. Please follow. Yeah, it'll be like this. Let me remove this admin part and show you. Because I'm an admin, it's appearing like that. But for y'all, <clears throat> you'll have an option to actually follow. You you can follow. Okay. Next, let me actually give you this link. Okay. Tomorrow also we will post on our. Um, we'll be posting on the other uh, details also, other sections, and then we have facebook if you click on facebook here on 360 digit mg when you scroll down when you click on this you'll also get the facebook link you just need to click on that and here you have an option to follow i'm already following so you're not able to see that 
but you see here follow click on that and here there'll be another quiz question which will be posted okay and you might want to answer those quiz questions also and thank you all so much tomorrow we were we are going to take this discussion forward <clears throat> yeah you can you can chandrasekhar do this live project ai is industry agnostic someone is saying that you are from arts do you know what ai is used to generate images and a first ai image which was sold ai generated image sold uh, where is that yeah an artwork created by ai was sold for 40000 pounds 40000 pounds and you know what saudi prince was cheated by buying a photo portrait right uh, this guy was fraud, fraud uh, because buying photo generated fake it was a fake photo basically right uh, an image mm -mm. fake uh, photo was purchased by Saudi prince okay so 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 yeah here it is painting bought by Saudi crown prince for 450 million dollars was found to be a fake and fake photos are generated using artificial intelligence fake photos also can be generated actually okay so that's uh, what the industry <laughs> or ai is doing that's the flip side of ai okay with this we are going to uh, stop the session and please fill the attendance because you will see a lot of benefits uh, you you can actually you know uh, watch the recorded video also on the YouTube channel. Please uh, go go ahead with that. There are creative views. Subscribe and click on notify without fail. Thank you all so much for joining in. Tomorrow we will connect at the same time and we'll take it further. We will post it on uh, Praveen. We will post the link on WhatsApp also. Yeah, we'll post on the whatsapp also thank you all so much friends take care and uh, stay safe tomorrow we will connect and take this discussion further thank you all